and today I just kind of want to show off some of the stuff I've done since my last video. It's been a little bit, and I've had a lot of people ask about uh, more videos, and so I want to show you what I've done since my last video, and just kind of show you the fruit production I'm getting right now. Um, the first thing I've done, if you look around here, I've always had people ask me about figs, and um, I always reply that I have one fig, but now I'm using a little fig wall here, kind of as a privacy. And uh, most of these are Vitaledette de Bordeaux, Flanders, and Panache Tiger figs. I do have uh, one over here. I think the dog's been barking me if I come over here though. Um, this one I got the flea market. It's a white fig. Is all he told me. That's the only detail I know. If you know what type this is, definitely let me know. That'd be cool. And then I have one over there at the very end. This supposedly a brown turkey. But uh, most of these I kind of cut down. That's just like how I like to do things like that. I like to cut them down, kind of keep them bushy. Um, all except for these ones at the end. I kind of left these ones uh, the full size when I planted them. Just so we can kind of see the difference and kind of the growth rates. As you can see on these, I pretty much cut all the leaves off whenever I originally planted them. And they're starting to get some growth back. Some of them lower growth. Some of the top. These ones right here, I didn't cut these ones back at all when I planted them. And uh, like that guy hasn't grown too much. This guy has grown a little bit here. You can see this is a new leaf. And he's kind of grown a little bit in there. But I'm going to try to use these to kind of block the view of the road there. And I also have this fig over here. This is a different variety that I have. And I don't know much about this one. They say it's... Um, the lady I bought it from said it was in the ground for uh, 45 years before she bought the place. So who knows? Uh, she showed me a fig. It was more like a, it was more like a kind of a blue fig, but um, a large blue fig. But that's all I know about it. So I'm kind of curious about this one as it goes through the, as it grows through the years. And um, I have my apples here. This right here is a Fuji. He's got a bunch of apples on him. So coming, probably in September, I'll probably start getting apples off him. And same thing with this, the red Fuji. He's got probably about eight apples on him, right here, right there, and then down across over there. And my persimmons haven't done so much this year so far. Uh, the Einsheimers, they lost uh, all their fruit due to the late frost we got. And this molly is delicious. This is my favorite apple that I grow. These ones get pretty big. In fact, I think this guy right here, this is a good sign right here. They're uh, nice, sweet. A very good apple. And my Anna, this one still has a few apples on it. In fact, in this area right here, I've still got quite a few, but they're ripening right now, as you can see. Nice, kind of red where the sun is, kind of green away from the sun. And then I have uh, some apples here on my, my Arkansas Black. This one's a pretty good producer of apples. Uh, I haven't really let him fruit yet this year, or through the years, but I'm going to let him do his thing this year and see what he does. And my pink lady, I've got a few apples on this one. And this guy right here, this is the ghost apple, a new variety, a white, a white apple. And this guy, very, very productive. Um... I let him grow a couple apples this year, but I lost both of them before it was harvest due to like a strong windstorm. And this guy right here, you see he's probably about four feet tall. I probably f pulled 50 apples off this guy. Just amazing production off of him. I hear, he don't, I hear it doesn't taste that well though. And this right here is my one fig that I had before. It's a Celeste fig. And you can just see the production on this guy. He, uh... He's got a lot of fruit on him right now, and he is, he's massive. He's shading the roots there from my mulberry tree, which I'm trying to use to kind of keep this side of the house cooler, because this side of the house gets the main sun on it. And I have another Flanders right here. And then I have a Pakistan mulberry, and this guy, this guy almost rose all the way down. You can see the graft right here, and you can see this where the bud union is right here and he had just a couple buds on this side of the union right here that were still okay and so he was able to grow back and he went from nothing this year all the way to 
right there, he's about eight feet. And then I'm using the lash right there to let the grapes grow up it. And then I just have some herbs right there. And a pomegranate uh, right over there. And if I come over here, this is by Medanda. He's gotten a lot bigger. He survived the winter, which I'm definitely excited about that. You know, I didn't know I could grow bananas in this area, and so I did a lot of frost protection on the trunk. And he definitely came back, and he's even got a few pups right there. Hit three in total. And then this is my blue ice cream banana. He's getting a lot bigger. When I first got him, he was only just, just a few inches tall. And then I got some jackfruit back there that grew from seed and some moringa. And um, when I cut back the figs, I went ahead and tried to root some of the cuttings here. And you can see the cuttings right here. Right in here are Violetet de Bordeaux. Over here are Flanders. And then over here are Panache tiger figs. Right next to this, this is a black uh, raspberry right here. And you can see all those ones in there. They're starting to get some leaves. And these right here are three Celeste cuttings I have. They're starting to get leaves. Some do have roots. And I'm just kind of trying this right here. Just a bed of potting soil. And you can kind of see they're, they're starting to leaf out there. And yeah, like I said, I have seen some with roots. But um, let me take you to the orchard real quick. I just want to show off my strawberries real quick before I go back out to the orchard. These guys... My wife does most of the care on these things and we've got a bunch of uh, a bunch of strawberries, not much um, fruit on them, but a bunch of strawberries and you can see that actually since she started taking off the runners they've actually fruited quite well. I've got a few right there and then a few over here too. And then that's in my chili bikini. And then my duck coop. We're getting ducks um, probably later, uh, probably tomorrow. And then my freshly planted raspberries here. I'm doing them right here by the AC because I get less sun over here. But uh, let's go out to the orchard. And we're out here. These right here, these are some zinnia seeds that kind of plant themselves out here. And then over here you can see I've got a bunch of clover. It's all flowering. A lot of flowers out here. Um, this side, this side you can see nice healthy growth. A lot of pluots on this side. But if I come over here, this area is more mixed. Um, so this is my flavor queen right here. It has one piece of fruit on it. Not quite ripe yet. You can see I cover them with the bags to keep bugs away. And yeah, there's a better look at it. Yeah, they did get some bug damage on it, as you can see. And uh, this guy right here, Geo Pride. Oh, I lost a peach. That's a good peach right there. Uh, you can see this is a Loring peach. We'll go with him first. A Loring peach. You can see he's got a lot of fruit on him. Very nice peach. Um, not the most consistent flavor, but uh, it's a good peach. Whenever you do have a good one. And then this right here is a Geo Pride. This guy is just loaded with fruit. I mean, you can see I went ahead and let the fruit kind of produce a little bit heavier this year and just kind of see what they can handle as far as uh, what happens when they have too much fruit on them and just what they'll do if I don't thin them. And honestly, I think they've done pretty good. This guy right here, he's not quite ripe yet, but he's um, he's getting there. But just so much fruit on him. And you can see a little bit of bird damage right. I saw it right, right there. And, yep, Loring. Some of these right here. The, this one right here is a Flavor King. A lot of fruit on him. He did get a lot of bug damage. The bugs, they seem to like certain types of fruit. Um, they, love the flo they love the Flavor Kings, and they love the Flavor Grenades that I have. Some of the other fruit is weird. They don't touch it. And these Flavor Kings, they're supposed to be ripen around August time frame. But um, this year, I guess because of the bug damage and stuff I'm getting on him, like you can see this guy right here. You can see he's got that bug damage right there. But that is 
that's a good piece of fruit right there. It's nice and soft, and they taste pretty good. Honestly, I know it's a complex, is what people normally say the flavor is, but um, if I had to say something, it kind of tastes like a kind of like a ripe banana. Once they start getting the spots on them, that's what it tastes like to me. It's got a nice kind of almost banana aftertaste to it. And um, you can see this one, it does have a little bit of uh, dieback on it. And I think that's because the rootstock it's on. Um, in my area right here, this is kind of Kyle. I don't like uh, the Citation rootstock. I went with that originally because it's what um, it was what was promoted for like uh, heavy clay soils. So I went with that, but I think the Myro is a better choice uh, because of the blue eyes I have over there in the other orchard, they're on Myro, and I don't have uh, nearly the trouble I have with these ones. Same with these uh, flavor grenades. They're on, um, they're on Citation, but they do produce pretty heavy. This guy right here is a Satsuma. It's a nice uh, plum. I don't really like the flavor. At least I haven't the past couple of years. This year he set a ton of fruit though. You can see he's got a lot of fruit on him. So I'm a little curious to see how it tastes this year. And this guy right here, he's another one that struggled off Citation. You can see a lot of kind of dead growth on him and um, he is the Lareda plum and he's actually had quite a few but a lot of bug damage on this one it's weird that the bugs like uh, certain they do really do like the plums they like certain types of though because they don't touch there's other varieties they won't touch but certain varieties they do like this one right here this one is one of my top pieces of fruit here I think the best tasting ones I've had so far this year are the Sweet Treat Plueri, the Flavor King, and the Spring Satin Plum Cot. And this guy, what I really like about him, you see he's covered, um, but I didn't cover him until recently because no bug really damages this guy. It's always the birds that go for him. So I just covered him once they started to turn color because the birds like to peck on him. And this kind of detours the birds. You can see I don't even put them on there that hard either. I just, just tie it tight on there and just leave it to hang. And this guy right here, he is probably my most productive one year after year. He is the um, burgundy plum. And just look at all that fruit right in there. Just tons of fruit on him. Just tons of fruit. And so he's a nice, um, not tart, no tart flavor to him. Um, kind of a traditional type plum flavor without the tart skin. It's, it's a really nice piece of fruit. And he's just so heavily produced. A little moth on him. And this right here, this guy's already done for the year. But this is my spring satin plum cot. I love that piece of fruit. It's a really good piece of fruit. This guy has struggled. He is my um, sugar twist Plueri. You can see he, he does okay at the start and he kind of dies back a little bit. I also think that's because of rootstock. I've just had a lot of trouble with the citation rootstock around here. Especially on peaches and uh, nectarines. But it does okay on on uh, pluots for the most part. I do have trouble keep, kind of keeping up with the dieback. And this guy is my uh, delight cherry plum. He's almost ripe there. He's kind of soft. But overall, I'm still not doing too bad. I probably need to trim my trees back a little bit. I've gotten quite a bit of height on them. But I do love the way it's kind of, they shade each other's roots. And it kind of gives it more of a, kind of a cooler feel back here. But um, I do thank you guys for watching. I'll try to get another video up fairly quickly. Um, till next time, bye.